I want to introduce you to black gum, also called Nyssa sylvatica. Uh, this is a tree that's very common in our flora and people find it very tricky to identify because it's not particularly distinctive. So I'm standing here in front of a medium sized tree and you can see that the bark is not super distinctive. It's got furrows in it, but you know, not, not anything that really stands out. What is notable about black gum in the tree form is that it has 90 degree branching. And so, right, the twigs and branches tend to come out at a 90 degree angle. You can see some that are a little bit higher on the tree. So that's a really good character for black gum of all ages, whether it's a small tree all the way up to a full size is instead of having limbs that are angled, right? Instead, they will stick straight out at a 90 degree angle. Let's look at the leaves. So the leaves are pretty non-distinct, but I would describe them as obovate, right? Meaning that the, they are slightly wider towards the tip than the base, but this is a character that can vary. Um, and sometimes they'll have a tooth in them, like here's one that's a little bit irregularly shaped. I don't have any. Sometimes at the top of the tree you'll see leaves that have a single tooth in them. That's a good character for black gum. Um, another character that I find really important, and this, this can be true year-round, but often in late summer to early fall, if you look up into the tree, you'll see these beautiful salmon colored, just one or two leaves that have changed color. So that's a really good character for um, black gum or Nyssa sylvatica. So this is a tree that's really common in the Piedmont um, as well as coastal plain and mountains. It tends to be more of an upland species so you're not going to see it. Um, you won't confuse it with the swamp black gum or swamp tupelos that we find on the coast. Um, so it, it's a very common in you know your Piedmont oak hickory forests but in other forest types around and black gum has a really important wildlife value. It is a bee tree. Um, so there's definitely Nyssa honey when, in, when the plant flowers in um, early spring. It has a droop fruit, so these are just single droops that, are, that you can see on mature trees uh, that are pretty easy to find and they turn black when they're fully mature. Nyssa is in the Nissaceae family, but it used to be in Cornaceae. So that's something to keep in mind. If you have an older field guide, it may say that Nyssa sylvatica is in the Cornaceae family, but it has been moved and now is in its own family, the Nyssaceae. So that's N-Y-S-S-A-C-E-A-E, -S -S -E, the Nyssaceae family. Sylvatica, which is a specific epithet, means of the forest and the woods, and that's a really appropriate name for Nyssa sylvatica because it is really, um, at its heart, a woodland species. And like I said, it is a very important bee tree, um, has high wildlife value, not so much um, lumber, but um, a very common tree and one that is definitely tricky. So entire leaf margins, look for those salmon leaves that occasionally are on and then look for that 90 degree branching. Um, and that could bring you to black gum or Nyssa sylvatica.